Hey everybody, it's Lindsay. I'm with David. Um, we're gonna wait a couple minutes and let some people hop on. Let's see here. Let's check our sound and everything. Is that funny? Oh my goodness. All right, we're just gonna wait just a couple minutes and let people kind of hop on. I'm Lindsay. I'm one of the um, co-owners um, of Mid Michigan Moms. We're uh, a local group that helps to support moms and parents throughout the Mid Michigan area and kind of bring people together, help them know what's going on, provide resources. Um, this is David. Do you want to say hi? Hi. And David, how old are you? Six. David's six. And David, what's one of your favorite things? Legos. Besides Legos, what are we doing right now? What are we talking about? Midnight Zone. The Midnight Zone. And um, so before we get started, we were just going to talk to you guys a little bit about um, homeschooling real quick. Um, I'm a homeschool mom. I've been homeschooling for a couple of years. And... Um, one of the things that I have found to be most successful when homeschooling is to really tailor everything to um, my kids' interests. So we do a lot with fish, we do a lot with animals, um, we do a lot of math that is, if you have one fish and you add three more fish, how many fish do you have? And so we really try to make um, everything specialized because some of those subjects, um, you know, reading and writing and um, phonics and things is not of interest to him. And so we need to kind of tailor them to make them interesting to him. So we often are um, creating our own uh, lesson plans and kind of just making it um, specialized to him. So real quick, before we talk about the deep sea creatures, David, you helped draw this picture. And what's on this picture? Can you show or talk about it? What are these? Deep sea creatures. Well, they're deep sea creatures, but what are all of these different, what do these words show? What are they telling us about? The zones. The zones of the ocean. And so there are different zones in the ocean. Um, and the zone that people are probably the most familiar with is the sunlight zone. And I don't know that that is not the technical name of that zone, but that's what we call it because we are in elementary school. So um, there is the sunlight zone and that's what everyone is most familiar with, right? So it has coral reefs, it has lots of marine mammals, yeah. um, jellyfish, sea turtles, those types of things. Um, next is the twilight zone. Um, and twilight zone starts at about 200 meters deep and um, down here, there is less sunlight, there are less animals, there's less food for those animals to eat. Um, and then starting at about a thousand meters down, um, so about 3,000 feet, um, is what? The Midnight Zone! The Midnight Zone, and this is where it's at, folks. Okay, so the Midnight Zone, here, um, there is absolutely no sunlight that reaches the water. Um, it is pitch dark um, and the animals and creatures that live here have had to adapt themselves because it is a very um, specialized environment. Um, so what are some, what are some, what's different about the midnight zone? No sunlight. There's, yeah. no, there's no sunlight, but what else? No plants. There are no plants. Do you know why there are no plants? Well, if there's no sunlight, there's no photosynthesis. So there are no plants that live there. Good job. All right. And there's also really high pressure. So pressure means what pushes down on you. Okay. So do you ever just jump into a big pool of water and you go down really deep and you feel kind of like pressure in your ears and it's kind of pushing in on you a little bit? Do you ever feel that? No? Okay. So that's what you feel. So these animals have characteristics to help them with the elevated pressure. So um, also below the midnight zone is the abyss. And then at the very bottom is the trench. 
the trench. And what does Dr. Seuss say? Well, it's not Dr. Seuss, but the trench at the bottom, you don't want to miss. So the midnight zone. Um, what are some special things about the creatures that live here that's different than any other creatures? They make their own light. They make their own light. What is it called when a creature makes their own light? Bioluminescence. Bioluminescence. And bio, so bioluminescence is when a creature makes its own light or it eats another creature that makes its own light and then it is able to illuminate itself. Um, I so. Show my picture the squid, my squid's going backwards. Squid is going backwards. No, my squid is not going backwards. It's going frontwards, but it's showing in the picture it's going backwards. Okay, I see. Okay, so um, animals make bioluminescence how? Can we make, do we have bioluminescence? No, but the creatures do. Like the no, we don't have bioluminescence. And bioluminescence. But the fish does, and so does the angler fish. Bioluminescence happens, it's a chemical reaction. So you take two separate things and you put them together and you get a result. So um, some of the ways that fish are able to make bioluminescence is um, with bacteria that lives on them and it glows. All right, so um, they have bioluminescence, which means they make their own light. They have, um, they have specialized bodies that, Lucy, you can go sit over there and look at a book. Okay, you can sit there. Um, they also have specialized bodies because of the high pressure pushing down on them. If we went down to the midnight zone, just, you know, jumped in the water, swam down 3,000 feet, what would happen to us? You get pressure down, break. No, that is, <laughs> what would happen to us? We would get crushed, yes, because a lot of our body is filled with air. Like in our lungs, <gasps> our lungs are like big balloons. So the creatures that live down there are very... Um, they're not dense and they don't have any air pockets or anything that, um, can get crushed. All right. Um, what else is interesting about, yep, you can color that. Um, what else is different about these creatures, David? Yep. What else is different about these creatures? So this doesn't look, so this is our little angler fish guy. He doesn't look like a normal fish. What does he have that's different? A lure and really sharp teeth that can break your hand off. Yes, so he has a lure, and at the end of the lure, what does he sometimes have? A light. A light. Right. And you know what? I keep I saying what he. Fish, Lucy, just use the crayons. Um, so I keep saying he, David but Thomas? this, yes, but this is not a he. All anglerfish that are large like this and have the lure, they're actually. Yeah. They're all female. So all of the anglerfish that you see that have a lure are female. And I'm sure there's an exception to that along, you know, some lines with the species or something. But um, anglerfish uh, have a super interesting way of reproducing. And the males are actually um, very small and they will actually like bite on and attach to the female and they kind of just swim around and live on the female and don't go anywhere. They don't, they aren't mobile. They're very small. Um, they live off of the female and then the female is able to use the male to reproduce. It is super disgusting and not something that we were aware of when our son, Lucy, no, just cut. And if you want to cut, you can cut this. Thank you. And, that one and not there. something that we were aware of that. when we encouraged the love of anglerfish in our family. If we had known that, we probably would not have encouraged it so much. Excellent. Okay. Um, what else about him? He has a very big mouth. Uh, Why does he have a big mouth? Eat an animal bigger than he is. They can eat animals up to two times as big as they are. Because there are no plants there, they have to. Yes. Um, I don't want to land on David. You can use them. Okay. 
Um, so they can eat things that are twice as big as they are. And there's not a lot in the ocean down deep. Um, and so one of the things they eat is marine snow. Do you remember what marine snow is? It's um, like decomposed bits of old fish, dead creatures and decomposing plants. And so there's not a lot to eat down there. Um, so these fish have a very slow metabolism. Metabolism is uh, kind of how your body uses energy and how much it expends. And so when something does swim along that it sees and it wants to eat, it needs to act quickly and it opens up its mouth and it will eat just about anything and gobbles it up. They also, their bodies are very flexible. Their bodies can kind of expand to accommodate for um, eating those larger creatures. They have very sharp teeth. They are all, they all kind of look like blobs. They don't have a lot of structure. They don't have a lot of muscles. They don't have thick, thick and it's not skin, but they don't have a thick exterior. Um, some of them, some of them are translucent. Um, so this is the angler fish. This is the family favorite. What else do we have in the midnight zone that lives down there? What else do you have? Let's do uh, our fish, my favorite one. That's your favorite one? Since one of my favorite ones. Okay. What about the viper fish do we know? Uh, he has sharp teeth like the angler fish. Yep. Um, I don't really know what else. It's got a big mouth. Got yeah, a big mouth. Ah, look at it. Good. And some of these fish, I'm not sure if the viper fish does, but... Um, there is a fish, so the stop light loose jaw, they can actually dislocate their jaw, right? So it can disconnect to make it open bigger so they can eat. All right, hey. good job. What's this guy called? A gulper. A, a, a gulper eel. And what do you notice when you first look at him? What do you notice about him? Tail. That mouth is huge. Look at that thing. And so what do they do? They gulp up their prey and eat them up. Uh-huh, but first the little fish see their tail, and they, and they want to know what it is, and they swim up, and then they eat them. That's right, they do. They have a glowing tail. That's fine. They have a glow Okay. They have a glowing tail that is bioluminescent, and so fish will see it and be attracted to it. We didn't really talk about that very much. So um, she is very hungry, right? So what's she gonna do? She's gonna light up her light at the end, Wait, can okay? I get a fish? And what do, you're gonna go get a fish? All right, he's gonna go get a fish real quick. We were not prepared with appropriate prey. Um, what kind of fish do you have? All right, this is just some creature. We don't know. Looks like a blenny. And he's, she's going to, and remember, it's completely dark. There's not a speck of light, all right? And there's maybe some little bits of white marine snow falling, but there is nothing around at all. And this angler fish kind of picks up a little hint that something's around, so what does she do? She has her lure up, and this fish is like, oh, you guys remember Finding Nemo? Oh, I see a light and it makes me happy. And she goes to check out the light and the angler fish eats her and has lunch. Mm, look at that. Yum. Here's, here's how I eat them. I keep eating them. She's gone. All right. So what else is there? Do you remember what this guy's called? A black dragon. A black dragon. Yes, and it's kind of all curled up, but it's like a long creature. Yeah, cool. Like and he has a big mouth, kind of disproportionate to his head. He has um, like a feeler. A lot of those creatures will have feelers so that they can kind of feel around for prey or for um, mates. Um, what else is that? What's this guy? Hatchet fish. A hatchet fish. And hatchet fish are kind of small. These aren't all like... Um, sized appropriately. 
and these guys get eaten by a lot of the other guys, unfortunately. And they're not, this isn't a great depiction. They're not super like, shiny like that. I do think they have a little bit of like iridescence to them, but not to that extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They eat a lot. All right. What's this? A glass squid. A Don't glass squid. Them. Why do they call it glass, though? Is he made of glass? No. Yeah, but what? We don't want to drop him. Why? Why don't you want to drop the glass squid? He's going to break. He's going to break. <laughs> All right, but why do they call him glass if he isn't made out of glass? Because he's see-through. See-through. What's a word for see-through? What's a word? It starts with T. Trans. Translucent. Translucent means you can see through them. And so that's kind of a good mechanism for them to hide also um, and to get away fast and stay alive, which isn't, isn't that the goal? Isn't that the goal? We want to stay alive. All right. Um, what is this guy? A vampire squid. A vampire squid. And this is actually one of our little characters from Octonauts. And if you're not familiar with Octonauts, Octonauts, um, thank you, Octonauts. You are the ones to originally um, get us so interested in creatures. And what's really interesting is that Octonauts um, have partnered with um, organizations to really try to bring awareness to um, the preservation of the ocean and its creatures and how we care for it. And, um, and so this is one of our Octonaut creatures. And he's a vampire squid. Do they call him a vampire squid because he eats blood? No, they, uh, they call him a vampire squid because it's cool sounding, right? I don't know. Um, he has, and maybe it's his eyes, he has very big eyes, um, and he has lots of spikes underneath him. Yeah, yeah. And he and uses, on the arm from his eye, there's some little lights that glow up. And he has, in, they're like a false eye, and so a creature will see it, and it glows by luminescence, and so something is attracted to it. And the fish kind of become hypnotized. It's like when you go to the, you go to the, go to the, the mall, and you see something sparkly in the window, and you're just kind of drawn into it. All right. So um, he has spikes below to help him to capture prey and to crunch them up and eat them. All right. So, good job. All right. It'll be okay. We can get anyway. So, I'm going to leave a link. Um, a couple of things. What I'll do um, is we'll um, kind of use lots of different ways to, like, you know, don't, introduce don't our. Hey, okay. Lucy, go back to the chair. Or you can go take a nap. Honey. Um, and so. We'll use um, little figurines that we can find or have around the house. We'll use lots of different mediums. So we'll use pencils and colored pencils and markers. Um, we'll get our, our easel to do different things. And um, there is absolutely no way that I could homeschool without the internet and technology. It is just amazing. So I'm going to attach a list of resources that I've used um, that are just amazing. Yes, a giant isopod. Giant isopod actually lives in the. Uh, kind of down in the trench, I think, also. And these are the most disgusting looking creatures. They're like these big giant beetles and bugs. And they walk around and they're gross. And I don't obviously know a lot about them because I'm saying that they're gross. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to do an activity and what it is is a black piece of paper why is the paper black because the midnight zone is black right and so we're going to use this piece of paper and we're going to use brightly colored um, crayons or colored pencils whatever i'll let him pick and um we'll let him draw oh that's a bad idea we'll let him draw i'll let him draw like whatever he wants to on there and then you can use some glue um, to glue on lines or dots or lures, um, whatever you want, and add a little bit of glitter on them to make them look like they are glowing can with their bioluminescence. Oh my goodness, yes, you can. Another thing I'm going to attach a link to are these um, critter cards. And they're little cards that have a creature, its name and some characteristics and information about them. 
you can cut them out and you can use them um, to play like go fish. You can use them to play matching games. You can use them to do memory where you have to match up the fish to its information. Um, and also when I'm doing activities like this, obviously I don't know any of this stuff about deep sea creatures until my son sowed an interest in it. And that's one of the things that's so exciting for me about homeschooling is that I am learning so much about um, things I wouldn't have otherwise done. And so um, absolutely, we use a ton of um, videos and live cams. And so we're going to attach some links to some videos that we think are really great and activities. I have some lesson plan links that you can use. Um, something else that we'll do later on this week. And so um, deep sea creatures, that's kind of our theme for the week. And so what I'll do, hold on, hold on. Um, so what I'll do is I will kind of stretch um, deep sea creatures out through the week. And so for example, okay, so for example, um, I had um, found, there's a website and you can create your own handwriting worksheets. And so I have um, this website and I've gone on and the words that we're going to use for our handwriting and our penmanship this week are all deep sea words. And so um, I asked him, I go, what words do you want to write? And he told me he wants to write deep sea and abyss. I always have him practice writing his name, um, his first name and his last name. Um, and uh, we're also Mom, we're going to print. Um, I can't keep it in. It's fine. Loose. Just. It's okay, put it down. Um, we're also gonna do, I think, abysses on there, uh, hatchet fish, and they're not necessarily words that he needs to know how to read or spell. It's just him um, working on his penmanship and practicing. But in the same time, he knows that those are deep sea creatures, and so it makes it a little bit more interesting for him. All right, does anybody have any questions? Any questions about homeschooling or deep sea creatures? anything that you want to learn more about. Um, if this is something that's kind of exciting for other people, we would love to jump on and do other lives. I know that we're all kind of cooped up at home right now. We're in Michigan and we aren't going anywhere for a little while um, because of kind of the, you know, current events. And so we are trying to make um, homeschooling and life in general just as exciting as it can be. So if there's something else that you guys want to learn about or want to talk about, please let us know. We love doing this. We love um, helping share our knowledge and resources with others. Um, I'm just looking down to see if there's any questions on here. How many teeth do they have? Oh my goodness. I don't even know. Um, a lot. How many teeth do you think these guys have? 100! We're going to go with the expert, 100. You know what, though? I will look. I'm just going to assume you're talking about anglerfish. I'm going to look. There are a lot of different species of anglerfish, um, and so we'll just try to find, like, a really general um, answer for you, and I'll see if this guy has on here. Um, no. Yeah. We're gonna find out about that though. I'll make a I'll make a note of that and I'll reply to that in the comments. Um, Gabriel, big Gabriel. Where to get the fish? I'm using. I got them on Amazon. I'll put a link on there. I'll put I, we if you um, Amazon like search like deep sea creatures or anglerfish. There's a good chance that we own all of that stuff. Um, oh, I was going to show you guys real quick before I hop off a couple of books that we love. Um, I am, uh, David, what is your favorite deep sea animal? Miss Jenna wants to know. Anglerfish. An anglerfish. All right. Um, let's see. I'm just reading about, let's see if there's anything else. The flashcards, I'll put a link um, after when I get, when I upload this live video and I'll have all of that on there. Um, all right, perfect. Okay. These are some books that we love. I, um, I'm, I'm not a fun mom. If you can, if you, if you can see that. Um, but so almost, I would say more than half of our books are nonfiction books. Um, because I think you're able to learn, a, learn from them. Not that you don't learn from fiction books, but, um, I think nonfiction books, they last longer, um, as far as the interest level. 
And so um, this book, this is an Usborne book, A Thousand Things Under the Sea. This is absolutely one of our favorite books. It has beautiful illustrations and it is divided up into kind of into habitats, but also divided up by animals. And David, what page is your favorite page in here? The Midnight Do you know the page number? No. You don't remember the page number? Okay. And so what's really interesting here is there's two full pages of the deep sea and it's just a picture and its name. And so what's kind of fun about this is um, we'll just read their names and if he hey. picks somebody that he really likes, we'll go and we'll do some research. Um, let's see what else is it. There's sharks. I swear I don't sell these books. I feel like I'm now just like all kinds of fish near the coast, seabirds, the coral reef. It's a really cool book. Um, the other book we love is Down, Down, Down. And this also is really interesting illustrations. And it gives you a visual ongoing throughout the book, how deep you're going. And so here is the surface. And this is the deepest spot in the ocean, the deepest spot in the ocean. Do you remember how deep the ocean is? Over 30,000 feet deep. So we could take the tallest point on Earth, Mount Everest, we could put it down on the deepest part of the ocean and it still wouldn't peak out. It is so deep. And so as you go through, it teaches you about the creatures. And then you can also see, so this is the midnight zone and you can see that we're not even that far down in the ocean. And what's really exciting to us is that most of the ocean is unexplored, right? So only about only 5% of the ocean and creatures have been explored. And so there are so many opportunities to of things to see and discover. And David, what is something you've told me that you'd like to do in the deep sea? You'd like to what? Name the unknown creature. He would like to name an unknown creature. So he would like to discover and name an unknown creature. And um, what would you name it if you found a creature? I'm not sure yet. You're not sure yet. Okay, um, and then the other two books that we really like are, this is the Dr. Seuss book that I had mentioned. It's not written by Dr. Seuss, but it's like the, the company, right? The Cat and the Hat books. Wish for a Fish, and it touches on the different zones of the ocean, and then just slightly a little bit on the dark zone, talks about their, a couple of different species, um, how they make their own light, how there isn't a lot of food down there, and they have to be very adaptive. Um, and last book is Weird Sea Creatures. And this is um, goes over the different types of adaptations that some of these um, creatures have. So big eyes, bioluminescence, um, wacky body parts to help them catch meals, that sort of thing. All right. Um, I think, David, how many fish can you name? Do you know how many fish can you name? Mm. I think so. I, you don't. I don't know. I never, I was like almost 200. Almost 200? Wow, that's a lot. Okay. Um, let's see. Are there any other questions? Anything else? All right. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with us and we hope that you learned something new. Um, and we're going to, we have our black paper. He's added his marine snow and he has his creatures and we're going to go ahead and do some glue and some glitter to make these bioluminescent. And then we're going to do, I'll leave a link to this also. There's another activity that Lucy has been working on and it comes with this sheet of creatures and you're going to color them cut them out then you label the zones of the ocean and then you glue the creatures into the zones that they live in and so um this is a little bit lucy's over here she's four that's a little bit over her um age and comprehension but i you need glue to get that to stick um but I have always been one to, I kind of teach the masses and if she can, you know, take away one little um, fact or just learn something new, I think it's great. Um, and she's, I don't, I have regular glue somewhere. Here's the glue. And so um, 
I am always, don't ever be deterred by um, the age, the recommended age or grade level on anything ever. Because I do think that the, everything has something that it can be used to help your kids or help you learn. Um, all right, I was just going to look to see if there's um, any other questions. Thank you guys so much. We're having so much fun. All right. I think that's it. Oh, are mermaids real? That's a good question, David. Are mermaids real? Mm -hmm. You don't know? Are they real? Are they a real, live, living uh, creature yeah. that we know about? Yeah. They're not. But it would be really cool if they were, right? Yeah, I wasn't wants really like mermaids. Absolutely. Okay, guys, I'm going to give me a couple minutes. I'm going to upload this video and then in the caption, I'm going to put all of the links to all the resources I referenced. And then um, I may also just write a post and put it on our site um, in Michigan Moms. And we are a national uh, site. There's over 90 of us all over the country. And so check out online because there may be a group of us that are close to you. And so we hope you guys have a wonderful day. We hope you're not staying too cooped up and you're able to, um, you know, get the kids outside and learn something new. So we thank you guys. We hope you have a great day. David, do you want to say goodbye? Goodbye. Do you want to look and say goodbye? Goodbye. 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 Lucy, would you like to say goodbye? Look, there's Lucy. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.